So welcome back to Office Script for Beginners. I hope you're feeling excited about Office Script. In this video, we're gonna pull it all together, working with worksheets, with cells, position control. We're gonna introduce a loop and we're gonna to try to create a list of numbers one to 10 in the spreadsheet using Office Script. So let's get into it. I'm gonna go straight into the code this time. And what do we need to do conceptually? What do we need to do conceptually to, conceptually to make the magic happen? Well, we know we can put a value in a cell and we know we can use offset to control position, but we need to do that more than once, don't we? We need to do that 10 times. So what's the concept we're missing here? What's the concept that allows us to repeat an action any number of times in VBA, in TypeScript, JavaScript land, in Office Script or in computer programming? Generally, it is of course a loop. It is a loop, the most powerful concept in computer programming generally, and in VBA, Office Script, whatever you're looking at. So what's the basic syntax here? What's the building blocks of a loop in Office Script? I've got you covered, guys. I hope you've uh, downloaded uh, our cheat sheet. I wish, I wish I had access to information like this when I was learning Excel Script, uh, Office Script for Excel over the past couple of years. So the basic syntax we need is right here. And we can go ahead, copy this into the uh, office scripts here. So I'm gonna go ahead, copy it in at the top of the script, control V, and you can see this is our basic syntax. Let's take a minute to go over this because this is a lot, guys. This is a lot to take in. So four, four indicates that we're trying to do something with a loop. We're familiar with the four syntax from Excel VBA for each four next. And this is effectively, a for next loop. So for let counter, well, we're already familiar with the let syntax because let in Office Script, as we've done several times in this series, declares a variable and we're using the classic counter variable. I've used the word counter. You could use any word here and don't get confused, guys. Don't get confused because people often use single letters, A, B, C, I, J, K uh, to represent this. I prefer informative variable name. So let count equals one, we've declared a variable and we've assigned a value of one to it. That is the starting point for our loop. We're starting at one. So we specified the starting point here, the second element here, separated by that semicolon. The second element here is the end point for the loop. And the idea here is while. So we're gonna do this loop while the value of counter is less than or equal to 10. This confused me for so long, guys. While the value of counter is less than or equal to 10, that's the second part of the loop. So we've got the start point and the end point. So what's this third element here? Uh, this is what's the step. And counter plus plus in TypeScript land, which is where we are now, is just gonna increment that variable plus one to the variable. So we're gonna go through this loop 10 times, hopefully. Then we've got our curly brackets. Now the instructions should live inside these curly brackets. I'm just gonna de-indent this, is that the word? And yeah, we'll, we'll go with this for now. So I'm gonna hit return and I need to put my instructions in here. Um, and I'm trying to think what instructions do I need to loop? What instructions can sit outside the loop? Specifying the target worksheet, for example, we only need to do that once so we can do that uh, at the top of our routine here. Once again, I'm gonna adjust the indentation there. And the target cell, so the start cell effectively, well, we only need to specify that once too, so I can put that outside of the loop. So just note that these lines of code are before the loop has started. So they're only gonna happen once at the beginning of the routine. Now, this is where it gets a little more interesting. So. I'm gonna pop this just at the start of the loop because I wanna declare the variable before we get into the loop. I don't wanna keep redeclaring that variable every time, although that would work. I think the logs would be on our backs, they'd be on our case, they'd be giving us some kind of warning there. Are the logs happy by the way? Uh, we do have some problems here. Okay, cannot redeclare block scope variables. So Office Scripts is pointing out that there's some problem here because have we duplicated yeah, because we've used this let syntax twice, um, Office Script not happy with that. And just like your best friend, possibly your life partner, they're onto you straight away. So let's go ahead, get rid of that let syntax that's going to um, 
really get on the nerves there of Office Scripts. And we're going to pop this line of code inside the loop. This line of code is going to go inside the loop because all we actually need the loop to do is that single command, but we need to do it. We need the loop to do it 10 times. So I'm interested. I'm going to set this to one and this to one. Then I'm going to go and consult with my partner. No, sorry, I'm going to go and consult with Logs and just check that Logs is happy. We need to go ahead and set the value of two. So let's put this in the loop as well. I'm just keeping an eye, guys, keeping a close eye on these curly brackets, just like we've always got a close eye on the curly brackets at the beginning and the end of the whole script itself. I'm keeping an eye on the curly brackets that show me the start and the end of the loop there. And I'd just like some indentation here. This is not necessary, just like some indentation. And I'm going to go ahead and support, make it easier to understand here. I'm going to put so the, the double slashes in and I'm going to say loop start. And at the end of the loop, I'm going to say loop end here. I think it's important to just point out where the loop, set, loop ends because just having that single curly bracket it's a bit of a risk, isn't it? That could easily get deleted. So I'm going to point out or missed. So I'm going to point out loop end here. Right. What's going to happen? I'm going to clear the spreadsheet. So you could start the video now, try to work out what's going to happen. Uh, Desk cell equals target cell dot, off, dot offset, effectively speaking in VBA language here, a uh, one row and one column, the target cell being C4. So I think what's going to happen is we're going to move away from C4 uh, by one row and one column. That's going to take us, take us to D5. Let me check the logs. Are we happy? Logs are happy. Let's save the script and let's go ahead and hit the button. And I think we're just going to have a value appearing in, there we go, the value is appearing in D5. Now, that's not all that happened. That's not all that happened there because we actually went through the loop 10 times. I'm hoping we did anyway. We went through the loop 10 times. So we actually put the value in the cell 10 times. It's just each time the value was overwritten. So we couldn't do that. And this takes me on to something that for me is a bit of a bugbear about Office Scripts, which is we can't step through the script as far as I know. We can do that in VBA. It's such a great facility to debug, to be able to go through step by step. We've done it so many times over the years on the channel. We can't do that. So loops are a bit more uh, difficult to understand as far as I know anyway. We can't do that. You tell me in the comments uh, if I'm missing something. So what could we do here? Well, we've got the magic, just like fish and chips, a variable working with a loop. This variable is going to make the magic happen because it's incrementing. It's increasing in value by one each time we go through the loop. We've seen this so many times in Excel VBA. So I can go ahead, hit counter here, what are we expecting to happen now? I've just substituted the number of rows we're going to move down and put the variable in there. That variable is changing in value every time we go through the loop. So once again, stop the video. What do you think is going to happen? We know we're going to start at C4. We don't have to worry about this. This, this is just doing an initialization. Not even It is necessary to declare the variable that. I just did that for completeness. Uh, anyway, let's not go too deep into that. Let's hit run and let's see what's going on. And you can see we've got here's the destination holding down the shift key. And I can see we do have that 10 times there. So we're getting dangerously close, guys. We're getting dangerously close to having our list of numbers. What's the final piece of icing on the cake? No, that's, that's not the right imagery. What brings everything together? What's that stone when the Romans were building arches or the Normans, I don't know who it was, and they put the keystone in the middle of the arch and it brings everything together, it creates a beautiful synergy, gives us that punch the air moment. What's the last bit of syntax that's got to go in here to give us our list of numbers? Tell me in the comments, guys. Come on. Come on. Let's let's scream it out together. Counter. We can use that, use the variable there. Do we need a small letter here? Possibly. I'm going to go to the logs. We can use the variable there. Now the value of the variable, which we know is going up by one each time we go through the script, should go into the cell. For completeness, we're going to start on C4. That was the original choice of cell, of course. Uh, so if I say um, target cell, we are starting from C4. OK, yeah, counter one here. That's moving us across a column. So if I take that to zero, we're not going to move across any columns at all. We can hit run. 
what's going to happen here and we can see we've got our beautiful list of numbers don't stop there guys don't stop there make sure you do play here what if we put the variable in twice here what's going to happen here well each time we go through the loop we're going to go another row and another column this time so we run the script this time and we can see we've now got these diagonal numbers here let's punch the air you go ahead do some play but make sure guys this is not the end of your office script career you know i've been learning the past couple of years there's been some hard times guys there's been some hard times the information on the internet is not that well organized yet with relation in relation to excel office script because it's fairly new i hope guys i've saved you for some time this cheat sheet go ahead and download it it's going to save you some time too good luck let me know in the comments how you get on i'll see you in the next video